All right, I'd like to show you the basics of annotating in Word using your tablet. First thing you need to do is open up a new blank document in Microsoft Word. Uh, you can do that by going f uh, Office Command button and hitting New, although I've actually added new document to my uh, customized command bar up there, and hopefully you've already watched the uh, how to configure your Word, Microsoft Word for the tablet PC video that I posted earlier, and hopefully you'll know how to do that. Anyways, I'm going to go New Document, and once you've got a new blank document, then you just press the Start Inking button, which we've already added to our customized bar. Uh, the Start Inking button, I think, is also under Review and way over here if you haven't added it to your customized bar, but I use it so often I have it as a customized toolbar. And this is the screen that will come up. You can choose from a ballpoint pen, which looks like that. You can pick different colors. Let's go dark blue. Uh, let's go red. You can choose felt pen, which is a little bit thicker. Again, different colors. Uh, and you can highlight. I generally find that felt pen and a nice dark blue works really well. The kids can see it, but it also isn't the same as any typing I have that's black, so it stands out. But I use multiple colors. To erase, tap the eraser, and then if you touch any keystroke with your eraser, uh, it will erase that entire keystroke, so I can do the whole thing just by dragging across. Or you can hit the Delete All Ink button if you want to get rid of everything. And that's it. That's the basics of annotating. Now, you can also annotate within typing. So, for example, let me close this. If I've typed the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. I can then say, okay, what do I want to highlight? Uh, I want to underline that word there. Or I want to draw a circle around that. Or I want to highlight that word there. So where are you going to use this? Well, I find this handiest when I'm doing math typey diagrams. I'm going to close this one and open a new blank one. Uh, for example, trig. Uh, I, I've learned how to do triangles in Word, but it's really a pain. The tablet makes it much faster. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go insert shape and I'm going to pick a line. There's a line. I just drew that with my pen. I'm going to insert another line. I'm going to carefully line up with the end of the first line and I'll draw a triangle, let's say, to there. I'll draw a third line going from the start. And the word is really good. It assumes you want to connect these together so you don't have to be dead accurate. There's a triangle, first of all. And then what I would do is I would go start inking. I would choose ballpoint pen. And now I can write in the angles. 38 degrees, 52 degrees, uh, X, and let's say that's 112 meters really a fast way of creating, say, trig handouts or any of the other graphics types, like volume, measurement area, all that stuff. If you go insert shapes, you've got lots of shapes for, uh, for at least for area. And for volume, uh, you can be kind of clever and do stuff like this. So if I want to do volume, there's one shape. I would then home, copy that shape, paste that shape, and then insert shapes, lines, and I would connect the dots. One, two, three. Oh, well, there you go. There's a three dimensional diagram. I have no artistic talent. I'd probably get rid of that. There's ways you can go around it, but you can get three dimensional diagrams if you're a little bit clever. Uh, I want to delete these. The easiest way I find to delete stuff is I go to my inking button, I select objects, which lets me draw a great big square, and I hit the delete button on my keyboard. I always have an external keyboard plugged in when I'm using my tablet in the classroom. Now getting back to my trig diagram, if I wanted to move this around, the problem is these aren't all grouped together. I need to tell Office that this is a group, and the easiest way to do that is to go start inking, select objects, I'm going to draw a big rectangle around it. And then I can either right-click or with my pen, to do a right-click with the pen, it's simply hold your pen down for about a one and a half second count and then lift it off just slightly from the screen. And I'm going to go grouping, group. 
Now that's all going to be treated as a single diagram. I still can't yet move it around. I have to change one more thing. So again, I'm going to hold my pen down. Oh, let's try that again. Hold my pen down, right click, format auto shape. And oh, let's try this again. Right click, format object. There we go. Layout. And I always choose tight as my layout whenever I'm doing graphics. A tight layout will let you drag stuff around and position it wherever you want to on the screen. And I think that also tells any text to kind of wrap around it and not overlap it. So there's an easy way to do trig diagrams. Uh, another one I use all the time is number lines. I would go insert shapes. I would pick a line with the arrows on the end. And if you're drawing a line and you hold the shift key down on your keyboard with your other hand, it will automatically go dead horizontal or dead vertical or 45 degrees. Office will figure out what you want. And then I would just go uh, ballpoint pen and I would add the hash marks, probably a little neater than that. But then I can go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. There's a really quick number line. If you want a, a grid, insert, well, not a grid, but a graph. Holding the shift key down, vertical line. Whoop, oh, brought up the keyboard. I don't want to bring that up. Holding the shift key down, horizontal line, and there's a grid. So that's the basics of annotating in Microsoft Word. Being honest, I don't do that much annotating in Word. I do do some specifically for uh, unit tests and answer keys. So for example, let me just show you uh, Math 12, uh, Probability, Quiz 1. Here's a quiz. I would have typed the quiz up first in Word and then, well, I would uh, then have annotated this as an answer key as well. So I have my original. You can see I called that quiz number one version two. And then I just hit save as and added the word answers. And that's where I did my annotating. All right.